All right, friends, welcome back to another chemical process video. We're doing number 13. This one is a bit of a doozy because there's a couple extra steps that we have to do using this series to develop a calibration curve. So as usual, I want you to read the problem by yourself and try it and see how far you can get because George is are telling us to do so. OK, so let's read this question. And so what we have here is a, a pharmaceutical product is made in a batch reactor. The reactor effluent goes through a purification process to yield a final product stream and a waste stream. Okay, so we have some feed. The initial charge is fed to the reactor and a final product RH weight to the reactor effluent, final product and waste stream. So we have some stuff coming in, some stuff being produced. We have a purified product stream and a waste stream. So if you fill that in, it should look a little something like this. So here's our feed effluent product and waste okay so this is the first step you always want to try to draw your mass balance and this is the first video on my channel at least that we're doing uh multiple reactors in a problem i have a couple of examples i believe um okay so it says that the analyzer calibration uh is a series of meterings corresponding to known mass fractions of p which is denoted by xp okay so what we have is this data all right and we have a calibration, we have to plot it on a logarithmic axis to determine an expression for xp as a function of r. Okay, so, well, the first thing is to realize that, hmm, is xp a function of r or is r a function of xp? Because they put this first, so you might be tempted to think that r is a function of xp. But no, this is just the readings. We have to realize that xp is indeed a function of r. Okay, not this, not this guy, all right? So... What we can do also notice how it says logarithmic axes to be honest i don't know where they got this i don't know how they realized it was a power law they probably got these numbers using the power law uh but i'll show you so what we're gonna do is you're gonna open up excel all right and put this right here and then you're gonna put this right here i'm gonna exit this real quick and you can put them side by side so you can view it just like that and i'm gonna do this so i'm gonna put xp right here well, if xp is a function of r, I'm going to write r first. So this is going to be 105, 160, 245. Yeah, do it yourself. So I'm, try I'm trying to show you the Excel so we can do this quickly together. Uh, 0 0.16, 0 0.25. Hopefully, I don't make any typos. All right, so now let me zoom in on this guy. I uh, hope you can see that. Let me just put this here just in case. So now we can plot these. So you're going to highlight this, click Insert, and then click one of these, one of these scatter plots. All right, so this is our plot. All right, I'm doing this quickly. So you're gonna click this plus, click this arrow to go for a trend line, and then click more options. All right, and then click here. So what we did was develop a trend line. All right, for our data, as you can see, based on the data, we have XP as a function of R. All right, that's important to realize. So if we click on our data, we want this to be a. Hmm, not sure yet. So why don't we click on this exactly and click over here. So click on the axes and click on the options so we can change this to a logarithmic scale. Ooh, what if we do that for x-axis as well? And then we click the logarithmic scale as well. Ooh, interesting. So if we click the data, what if we do a power? Oh, that fits quite nicely. The linear was pretty good, but that's actually quite better. The key is to display the equation on the chart display the r squared if the r squared is greater than 0.99 you can safely assume that it is indeed a um a uh, <clears throat> a good fit right so great we actually completed what we we're supposed to do so why don't you go ahead and write down this data so this is actually the y is actually your xp as a function of r let me go ahead and continue back here Hope that wasn't too fast i'm trying to go fast to not Keep you guys too bored keep you all too bored but we what we have is basically this here's our data all right and here's our here's our power law correlation that i uh try to nicely fit here and uh if you if you realize here's on a on a log scale and here's on a linear scale it's actually the same data it's just a different fit okay so we can use this equation so Brilliant. Now we have our equation for xp as a function of r. Great. So 
if we can continue with part B, now we have to do a bit of more analysis on the system. So let's read what this says. The mass charge of the reactor, 2253 kilograms. Oh, we can start filling some stuff in. So why don't you go ahead and fill the stuff in? It should look a little something like this, right? Because we have the feed, the mass, the effluent. Oh, look, we have the R values. And look, we have a value, we have a function that takes in R values so we can convert these into the mass fractions, right? This is the mass fraction as a function of R. So look, I can plug in 388. I can get the mass fraction for the effluent stream. I can, uh, let me get my laser pointer. I have mm, 583. I can plug in 583 and 140. Look, great. We have all these mass fractions using the data that we just obtained. You see what that did? So let's, let's recap real quick. So using the data, okay, this is a calibration curve and we are able to obtain other values other than these based on this equation, okay? So now that we have this equation, we can plug in these values for R and using these values, now we have our analysis of our effluent and our product and our waste stream. So that's how, I have, that's how we got all these values, okay? So that's pretty interesting now using some uh, engineering and some experimental data, kind of like some real life stuff, you know? Okay, so these are our values, and now we want to calculate the mass fraction of product in all three streams, which we did, and calculate the percentage yield of the purification process. Great. So let me just move that here. All right, so what we do that, we have this definition for the purification yield, which is the kilograms of the product in the final product, which is here, and the kilograms of the product in the reactor effluent, which is here. All right, so how do we calculate that? Well, hey, look, notice how this is a feed here. If n equals out, right, because nothing's coming in or out other than this guy and this guy, right? So look, if the feed is coming in here, this has to be, right, conservation of mass, all right? What about some other stuff? So now we can calculate the effluent and the, this, excuse me, the product in the effluent by multiplying the mass fraction of the product in the effluent, right? That's giving us this. And similarly, for the product, we can multiply the mass fraction of the product in the product stream. And look, now we can plug in this value. You're going to do the calculation yourself, all right? But you can, you can plug in this equation. It's given right here. And look, we have the values right here. You should get about 95%. That is our answer for part B. Great. We're just chugging through these. Now for part C, you were the engineer in charge of the process. <laughs> charge. It's charge. Okay. You review the given run sheet and calculations of part B. Perform additional balance calculations and realize that all the recorded run data cannot possibly be correct. State how you know. Itemize possible causes of the problem and state which cause is most likely and subject. Suggest a step to correct it. So um, right off the bat, what I'm thinking is like, you know, we got to check our mass balances. You should always check the mass balances on the system. So we can do that for the purifier because we know it's good for the effluent. So for the purifier, well, it's going to be N equals out. So what's coming in is effluent and the product and the waste is coming up. So plug those values in. We can calculate the waste stream. All right. Similarly, we can do the mass balance on the purifier for the product, the product on the purifier. Hope I'm not going terribly fast. Okay. So similarly, we have the product and the effluent here is equal to the product and the product plus the product and the waste. Does that make sense? So we can plug in these values by multiplying right here. And right here, and if you do the values, you realize that 117, 1117 is not equal to 1195. Well, that's peculiar. Well, that's because there is not necessarily mass balance on the system. So what do we do? Excuse me. What do we do is we got to realize there's a couple things that we, a couple assumptions that we made. We assume that this was exactly equal to this. Well, is this a perfect reaction? We're just assuming that there's exactly perfect feed. Okay, well, it's probably not the reactor. It's probably the analysis. If we have more data points, we can get a more accurate description for our calibration curve. So this is based on statistical analysis. So the more data points you have, the more accurate your results will be. Uh, additionally, there might be some other um, errors. Perhaps these R values are wrong. So what I would recommend is to recalibrate, I would redo the calibration curve to recalibrate the the device used to, to sense the, the stuff, 
and uh, run it again. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, if you watch my vlogs, you know I'm a grad student, and sometimes you get some, you got to get some calibration curves to analyze your data. But if the calibration curve is off, then your data is going to be off. So you have to rerun that. Um, great. Uh, let me know if you think of other possible causes to the problem. And uh, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share this with your friends, family, and your dog.